Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Coe here. Super excited about some of the drawings enhancements that we're putting into this May release of Fusion 360. First thing, we took the drawing settings and we put them at the browser. And we also enhanced some of the settings themselves. First one I'm going to show off is the ability to show line widths. Awesome, right? Um, here we can control the different um, line width thickness. Uh, if you will, so that we can show the pre and post um, versions of our quarantine self. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm certainly a little thicker than I was a month ago. <laughs> well, that's not it. Um, while that's uh, certainly a nice feature enhancement, this one to me is going to unlock some possibilities and open up some doors that many of you have been asking us for um, for a while here. And that's the ability to create geometry um, on its own, uh, geometry that's not dependent upon 3D models to put in your drawings. So we're calling this free sketch. Um, you can go ahead and, as you saw, we've got lines, arcs, circles, rectangles. We've got some modification tools for move, copy, trim, uh, offset here. I'm going to uh, sketch out uh, this, this profile here just as, you know, maybe this is a symbol. Maybe this is a piece of geometry that I throw in my drawings and make minor, minor modifications to it all the time that doesn't need a model associated to it. Um, and I want to use this symbol or this piece of geometry, this representation over and over and over again. Um, certainly a use case that I think I can't even begin in two minutes to describe the amount of usage that this functionality is going to get. Here's another great example, notes. What if I just create a new sketch, I put some notes in there, notes that I normally would type over and over and over again, maybe make minor modifications, tolerances, details, and those types of things. That's a great use case for using this functionality because the great thing is any one of these sketches that you create, you can copy and you can paste them on this sheet, of course, or you can paste them in between sheets, as I've done here, blank sheet, incredibly detailed drawing. I just, they're all hidden lines, <laughs> a hidden line joke. Anyway, um, that's all great between sheets, but where it really begins to hit home is the ability to copy and paste these sketches between drawings themselves. This one's going to be huge. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. Stay tuned. Much more to come in drawings. Dang, Rob, those are some great improvements to drawings inside of Fusion 360. I know there are a lot coming in drawings, so I can't wait to see what the team will deliver next. All right, I'm going to start this one going in Fusion Team. For those longtime users, you may notice a new side panel in the left to help you navigate different projects in your team. This will let you drill down projects and folders to get more information on the selected item. In addition, you could hit the three dots to get a few options for interacting with the data. This will make navigating all the data in your team a breeze. In this example, I was able to locate a file and share a link to the design right through the panel. Now, this is a setting that the admin can set for all the members of the team. If you are an admin, you can go to your avatar in the top right, then go to settings. After that, go to preview and you can enable or disable this new panel for all members of the team. Okay, this next enhancement is an update to one of our technical previews, so make sure to turn it on in the preferences called edit in place. Now I'm going to start with a trick that Rob Cohey, or as I like to call him the old wise one, from the drawings portion earlier, taught me. We are going to make an empty document, save it and insert into my assembly. Now let's edit the new empty component in place. New as of this update, we get a new option to create an associative or non-associative in place edit. If you are trying to reference different existing geometry to drive this assembly parametric, I would recommend the associative option. If you are trying to avoid complex references, the non-associative option will let you create a new component, measure and drive your design manually. In this case, I want to drive the end cap prototype parametrically, so I'm going to use the associative option. Now notice that I created these two extrusions as two separate components, which now creates a subassembly in my original blank component. These now will act like any other components in Fusion 360 and freely move, have different part numbers and more. Now, as of this update, we can now use assemble tools to define how these components interact while in edit in place mode. Once I get out of edit in place, we can now make one last as built joint to lock the new end cap prototype to the housing. Now I know edit in place is a different paradigm shift, 
but make sure to check the link in the description to Rob's video series explaining this workflow in detail. Okay, now those into surfacing. This next one is going to be exciting. Now when you go to use the surface loft and set the continuity as G1 tangent or G2 curvature, there will be a new option to control the lofted surface as free edges, to align with the edges of the selected surfaces, or to align to the surface. These tools will help you control your transition surface even more effectively. Now, let's switch over to a few updates in generative design. First on the docket is some enhancements to apply materials to the generative study. Previously, all the materials were run for every type of manufacturing method selected, which didn't make any sense when you were running a 2.5 axis manufacturing constraint on aluminum silicon magnesium 10, which is an additive material. So we fixed that. Now you can apply materials based on each manufacturing constraint. Doesn't that just make sense? Next, I wanted to see if I set this generative study up correctly before launching it off to the cloud. So let's turn on the previewer. New as of this update, we can now hit the settings icon and change the fidelity of the preview. In this case, let's crank it up to high. I can see that I have missed a few obstacles for these two holes. Previously, I would have had to stop the previewer, then go fix the issue, but not anymore. Now the previewer will stay enabled while changing loads, constraints, or design space requirements, saving you clicks while setting up your generative study. Now, let's pop into the Explore environment. Previously, the visibility settings for the filters would reset if you changed files or went back to the setup environment. Well, we listened to you and all agreed that was annoying. So we stopped that and went one step further by now creating favorites based on your selections. So if multiple members of your teams are examining results, they can all have their favorite visibility settings stored when they come back. Well, that's all the updates I had for this one. Now I'm going to throw it over to Edwin to take us through some of the enhancements to the new electronics workspace. Thanks, Bryce. Those enhancements to edit in place are going to change my modeling workflow. But now let's move to some updates to electronics and Fusion 360. As you know, the building blocks of electronic design is based on libraries that are in our current repository and creating my own parts. With this latest updates, our users will be able to easily access assets that are available from other libraries. From the library editor toolbar, you could select symbol, footprint, or device. In the next dialog box, you'll see that we have the new import button. From here, you can navigate the current libraries that you have available or expand your search by clicking the open library manager to access additional libraries. After finding and selecting the components, go ahead and click OK to have that component added to your current library. Now, this brings me to our next update. Autodesk Eagle users can create managed libraries, allowing them to share and remotely access their libraries. Fusion 360 users are able to access managed libraries, but couldn't create them until now. The cloud and link indicators confirm we have successfully synchronized our managed library. With this feature, electronic library collaboration between Fusion 360 and Autodesk Eagle users is now possible. 